Do you think that the access to the Croft site is excellent? I don't know how you define excellent, so I'm not going to answer it in, that, in those terms. Uh, it's been through the planning uh, process. <laughs> the, it's, it, no, sorry, you can laugh at that, but that's what the planning process is there to deliver. It's there to decide whether that, the, the uh, application before it is fit for purpose, and it has to consider the transport arrangements and all the representation that's made. <coughs> the council has a statutory duty to ensure safe routes to school. The can it has an exemplary record of doing that. It doesn't just do it in Croft, it does it across the borough. So the issue, the, question, the answer to the question you're asking is, is it fit for purpose no. to no. deliver access to that school? We believe that it will be, because no. the planning committee have said that it will be. And no. uniquely, no. uniquely, extra money has been put aside, um, which I did have some concerns with, because it sent out a message that perhaps it wasn't fit for purpose. But because of the concern, extra money has been put aside in to case there is any further works. But it's not, it's not being determined. If any, if any issues come up that need to be addressed, um, when the school is in place and the access is, and the, I think it's how much is being spent on access already? Half a million, and I think there's an extra 200. Extra two hundred thousand set aside. Set aside. Set aside. Yeah. Um, so you know, we believe that the access is sufficient. I am told by officers that the access to that school will be as good as at least seventy-five percent of the schools in Sweden. Thank you very much, um, <coughs> Bill. Yeah, yeah, we can. Uh, Bill, just give uh, Bill Hughes a chance to uh, respond as well. well. I think if anybody has been down Marlborough Lane, where they propose to have this access at the moment. Uh, there's a lot of trees on one side that are going to be destroyed. Could be. Could be. You don't know. Otherwise, otherwise <laughs> they've, got to, they've got to eat into the um, the hotel car park, or, or they've got to go right up close to the houses in Marble Lane. Um, if they're going to put in pavements for pedestrian access for safe safe uh, children to get, get to school. Again, you're going to narrow the actual vehicle space. Uh, um, it's a complete nightmare. You know, you've got huge lorries, you know, have difficulty getting through there now. Even if you ride it by a couple of meters, you're not going to, you're not going to have a two-way safe uh, access there. You've got the hotel there, you've got Intel uh, using that area. You've got the sports center. When well, there's a the big event at the sports center, it's complete chaos at the moment. What's it going to be like in the morning with all these children and mothers and fathers and is trying to get through, whether it's on the foot, on bicycles, on cars, and whatever. And again, it's going to cause massive uh, traffic problems in the rest of old, old Town, in Marlborough Road, and Newport Street, Croft, everywhere. It's going to be complete uh, congestion and chaos, and it's going to be unsafe as well. Uh, one, one final comment from one of our candidates, please, before we move on to the next question. My son plays um, football for Croft Under Sevens, and I know when there's a football tournament there, it was absolute chaos, and I think there's some pictures at the back. So if that's what it's like with a football tournament, I can't imagine what it's going to be like with the school drop-off and pick-up. One final uh, answer question uh, relating to this uh, particular issue before we move on, please. Okay. Hello, I'm uh, Bob Robertson. I live in East Croft Lodge, which is uh, one of the ones that's going to be affected by this. Uh, I've had one or two meetings with councillors, uh, Brian and uh, Councillor Borden, and uh, they've talked very honestly and open to me, and uh, the last time I talked to Councillor Borden, I asked him about the access to the school, and I'm quite aware, I've lived there 20 odd years, that the council have got a very difficult job in making decisions on this, because we're surrounded by all narrow roads everywhere. And uh, Councillor Borden told me, uh, the council, when they decide on the access, the final proposals for the access, it will be made public, because I objected to come round to Evelyn Street and take traffic under the bridge, and uh, of course the residents immediately facing uh, the access to the Croft School on the, on the inside road, uh, upset about this too. So really, we don't, we don't know the final plans for the access. Can you tell us whether it's going to be stopped coming on Evelyn Street, 
or whether the return is going back via Piper's Roundup again. Is that something that you can answer? I know, obviously, things are still being Brian, I think it is a most of the access is via Piper's Roundup, as I understand it. Um, and I think the plans are available. Am I right? Yeah. Well, I just want to make sure. uh, clarify. <coughs> yes, I mean, the, the planning application made very clear that uh, the uh, improvement to the Marlborough um, Lane, uh, the, main, uh, the main Marlborough Lane going from Intel Roundabout to Evelyn Street, uh, that section to the cross um, uh, 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 centre uh, would be widened. We recognise that that is not uh, wide enough, and highway uh, engineers will be widening uh, that road. But I must say that I have personally um, said to the um, residents of the Spur Road on a number of occasions, and I'm sure they would accept that, that I've said, well, if this planning application um, uh, is approved by the planning committee and I've made it clear originally it could be approved, it could be uh, deferred or it could be um, uh, refused. Um, think about what you would like to uh, us to do to that spur road and I have to say I have not had one suggestion of what we might do. It is, uh, it is, it is a, uh, a two-way carriageway, and I accept because it is a kink, uh, it's not a straight road, that does slow right, you traffic defer to down. Your, you defer to your professionals for every opportunity on this. Certainly, that's right. why we now have professionals to advise us on highway yeah, words. What are your professionals um, They say? have assured us that that um, access is safe. But it's not, uh, not Brian. Can I just a last comment? Uh, well, well, this well, this I have to say, this subject matter afterwards, there will be opportunity to talk to the councillors and the candidates. Yes, more than happy to do so. so please, more than happy to do so. I think it's very clear that there's a difference of opinion here. Uh, absolutely right. But we have. No, Brian, that's fine. Excuse me. As I live down, I do need to have a right of reply. Thank you. Um, I have visited the, the site very recently. Um, do I think it's an excellent um, site? Road access? No, it's not excellent. Do I think it's acceptable? Maybe at two o'clock in the morning? Yeah, it might be acceptable. Do I think it's acceptable when the sports centre is being used, when the children will be going to school? when lorries are going down to the hotel back entrance. I left the site at about half past four um, on Friday and um, I had to stay stuck in my car until the traffic kept coming through, coming to the sports centre. I think the council need, really need to look at this and rethink, even if they don't rethink about the school, Please, I would ask them and beg them to really have a good look at yeah. the highways issues. Uh, yeah, we've um, heard a lot of talk about the Croft issue, because obviously that's what's important to all, all of you. Um, and hopefully we can continue to talk about that after. I think also... The, there is plans for the mitigation measures that I think was already mentioned, this £500,000 put aside for mitigation. Yeah. I think what's important is what you need to be thinking about is if the planning does go ahead or it doesn't go ahead, who do you want to represent you? And, and our, our promise to you is that we will work with you and listen to you and we will work with you on any of the issues in the area to represent those concerns. And if you don't think you've been represented, or you, it's up to you to choose from any of us putting ourselves forward who you feel the best person is to represent you. And that's what we're offering to you, that we will listen and represent you.